Okay, so welcome to this next video on the theory of probability. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss, uh, introduce the concept of uh, covariance of two, uh, two random variables, x and y. And this is a quite important topic um, because it will lead us on to correlation, which is a very important topic, and we're going to define the uh, product moment correlation coefficient, which is a measure of uh, how well correlated two well random variables are. So say if we, um, if we took the human population and we had two random variables, so we could ascribe to every single person in the population a height and a weight, uh, and uh, then uh, what we'd like to know is are those two random variables correlated? Um, is it, you know, do, does as your weight increase your height also increase or uh, converse or vice versa? Uh, or are they not correlated? And that's, and this is going to allow us to answer questions like that, but we'll come to that. Uh, firstly, we'll start off uh, just with, in fact, that's probably a good example to use. So we'll use this, um, this probability space and the abstract probability space is you have uh, every possible person uh, on the planet and the experiment is you can pick a person at random so there are approximately 7 billion people on the planet so we have every single person on the planet in this um, probability space which is uh, the set of all possible outcomes of picking an individual person from the population at random okay and we can set up two random variables so we can set up the random variable x let's say in fact shall we do it more we'll, do, we'll give them better symbols than that we'll give them h a, sorry H does not have an H in it. Uh, H uh, will give them H, which will ascribe you your height. So it will ascribe some uh, some real number to every single person, uh, ranging from zero upwards, uh, potentially. Uh, generally, you won't get above a certain amount, but um, you, um, you, in principle, you could, of course. Um, okay, and then we will ascribe another random variable, weight, which again will ascribe you. Um, some uh, number zero upwards. So I don't care what units you're using. Um, we, we, for this purposes, you can you think of height as being in meters to make it concrete, and weight as being in kilograms. Uh, weight, actually, no weight. Uh, that would strictly be mass. Um, we'll make it mass because uh, that's more intuitive. Weight actually should be in newtons, strictly speaking. If you're a physicist, and I'm sure I'll get some is telling me off for that. So um, we'll have mass in kilograms and uh, height in meters. Okay, so um, we want to, uh, because otherwise weight could depend on whether you, you know, I was, whether this is a man on the moon or whether it's a man on the pla on the planet, so it's not very well defined. So we'll use mass, which is far more, uh, it's constant no matter what planet you're on or what gravitational field you're in. Okay, so mass and height. Um, so we have these two random variables ascribing you uh, values. So each, each person in here, so each little outcome in this probability space is ascribed a height and he's ascribed a mass. Okay, uh, so um, what, and these are going to be random variables, which means that they're going to inherit the same probability space structure as this has. Uh, so in this probability space, uh, every single, um, because it's a finite probability space, it may be very, very big, it's got 7 billion people in, but it is a finite number. So uh, you can put uh, every single individual outcome into a set by itself and consider that an event. So you can ascribe a probability of a specific outcome happening because the specific outcome, as I say, can be put into a set by itself and ascribed a non-zero probability. And the probability of picking any individual person is going to be approximately 1 over 7 billion. Or how We'll assume the population is exactly 7 billion, so uh, 1 over 7 to the times 10 to the power of 9, uh, which is 7 billion. Okay, uh, so uh, there will be a certain gang of people all ascribed a certain height. So uh, maybe, potentially, everyone in the world has a slightly different height, but some people might have exactly the same height. And those two people, though, well, those that group of people that are all ascribed to specific height will all be ascribed the same number in here. So the probability uh, of a certain height turning up is going to be the same as that probability. So if we imagine this is a set of people, this is a subset of the whole population, which are all ascribed the same height, uh, then the probability of that height happening will um, will be the probability of this entire event here, i.e. the sum of, well, it'll be the number of people who all have that height times 
uh, one times seven, uh, one divided by seven times ten to the nine, uh, because it will just be the probability of this event, and the probability of that event is just the number of people in it times this number here, times the probability of each individual person. Okay, uh, so if we want to take the covariance, the covariance of these two random variables h and m, then the way it is defined is the expected value of h minus the expected value of h, so I'll put brackets around initially to make it ultra clear, uh, times mass minus uh, the expected value of mass. So it is basically the expected value of the new random variable, and we'll discuss that a bit more after we've just discussed this probability space structure a bit more. So we could think about the joint random variable, we could think about a joint random variable which will ascribe uh, to every single person an ordered pair which is their height and their mass, and that will be a subset of the real line, uh, sorry, it will be a subset of R2. So every single person will be ascribed a height and a mass. So I will put on the x-axis the height, and I'll put on the y-axis the mass. So every single person in this probability space will be somewhere in here. And basically what, uh, what we would expect is as your height goes up, your mass goes up. So we'd expect them to roughly lie along a sort of straight line like that. So we'd expect all of these points to be plotted on here. Okay, so each of these points, each of these points in R2 will be ascribed a probability. So most of them, for instance, all of these negative ones where we've got negative height and negative mass, or even just one of those. So all of these bits, let's say, um, these blue bits where you've got either negative mass and that negative height in this case, or um, negative mass over here. Basically, they're all going to be ascribed the probability zero because no one is going to be ascribed those ordered pairs. So um, they're all going to be ascribed the probability zero, uh, and these specific ones here, uh, the specific outcomes that people do have, they're going to be ascribed the respective probabilities. I, if you have a specific number here, like let's say height two meters and uh, weight, let's say uh, sorry mass. Uh, let's say 50 kilograms. I don't know if that's too much for a two meter person. Uh, two meters. Uh, that's probably appro approximately right, maybe. Maybe 60 kilograms. Okay, so 60 kilogram person, uh, two meters high. Um, and that is a point along here. Uh, and that will be ascribed the probability, uh, basically, uh, back in this probability space, there'll be a bunch of people who all are height two meters and uh, and weight 60 kilograms, so a mask 60 kilograms, do excuse me if I confuse those two again. Um, maybe there's absolutely no one, maybe on this planet there is absolutely no one with height 2 meters and weight 60 kilograms, in which case this probability will be zero, but there might be, and uh, if there are, there might be more than one, there could be more than one person, and basically if you go back and look at all the people who were ascribed that ordered pair by this joint random variable, then the probability that you ascribe to that ordered pair will be the same as the probability that you ascribe to this event, which is in the original abstract probability space, in this event, let me just colour it in and call it a name, uh, so this is this here, this pink event, is um, the event that uh, which we're going to call the set of all people, so people, which is an element of this sample space, such that uh, person, such that if we take the um, joint random variable, let's say, let's call this joint random variable J, so that if we take J of a uh, person, it's equal to 260, i.e. if we take their height and we take their weight, uh, it comes out at 2 and 60. Okay, so you put in all the people that have those um, measurements, and they're in event E. And basically, the probability of this uh, of this ordered pair is going to be the same as that probability of its inverse image in the abstract probability space. And this is just going to be its size, i.e. how many people there are in that event, times this uh, 1 over 7 times 10 to the 9, because each person is assumed to be equally likely to be picked in our uh, random sample, if you like. Okay, uh, so uh, the co what what this covariance is going to do effectively is it's going to measure it's going to measure how positively correlated they are in a sense, and it's not correlation. Correlation is a better version of this. It's a modified version of this, uh, but in a sense, that's what it's going to do. It's going to work out whether um, they are 
in a positive line like this, whether they are positively correlated in that intuitive meaning, i.e. as h gets bigger, m gets bigger as well, or whether they are negatively correlated. In this case, we wouldn't expect them to be negatively correlated, but negative correlation would be as h gets bigger, m gets smaller, so something that looked more like that. Um, but uh, why? I want to try and give you some, at least some intuition for why uh, this is going to measure that. So let's think about what this means here. Um, it's taking the expected value of h minus the expected value of h, and it's timesing it by m minus the expected value of m. So let's call this new random variable, um, which is, uh, let's call this new random variable. We're going to, so let's call this new random variable t. Uh, which is going to be the random variable which takes h minus the expected value of h and multiplies that by uh, m minus the expected value of m. Okay, so if we draw, uh, basically what that's going to do is it's going to ascribe every person on here, it's going to ascribe a real number. So it's going to take, uh, it's going to take a person, so let's say we've got our person here, it's going to take their height it's going to subtract off the uh, mean height of the entire population, so the expected value of the height. So it's going to say whether you're above or below average in height. And then it's going to times that by whether you're above or below average in mass. So it's going to spit you out. It's going to spit each person out a real number. And what we want to do is we're trying to take the expected value of this as a random variable, i.e. Uh, if everyone's given a... If given a um, a real number by this uh, random variable t, what I want to do is calculate the expected value of t, which is I sum over every possible person what their value of t is, so t of person over every possible person in uh, the sample space. So that's um, that's what how we calculate... Um, Oh, wait, 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 no, we'd have to times it by the probability. We'd then have to times it by the probability, obviously, the probability of that person coming up, which is just 1 over 7 times 10 to the uh, 9. So basically, what we're doing is just doing the mean. We are adding up this value for every single person and then dividing it by the number of people. Uh, that's, how we ca that's what we really want to do. We want to work out this value for every single person, add them all up for every single person, and then divide by 7 times 10 to the 9. Okay, and this video has been going on for quite a while, so we'll cut it there and continue this discussion in the next video.